Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When I pray the Lord's Prayer, am I reciting a well-known verse? Or am I expressing my longing to know God? Welcome. Today we will focus on part four, prayer. During this time, we will focus on the teachings of Jesus and how they provide us with the thoughts, ideas, and words we can use in our own prayers. Let's begin with a prayer. I will pray the lines for leader, and you will pray the lines for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. We will now hear the word of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again. Rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The Word of the Lord. Let us pray following our assigned parts, beginning with the adults. Adults, loving God, may we always turn our hearts toward you. Children, thank you for the teachings of your Son, Jesus Christ, so that we may remain faithful to you. Adults, help us better understand Jesus' teachings and live them in our daily lives. Children, and send your Holy Spirit that we may have the strength and courage to practice what we learn. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we begin exploring Jesus' teachings, imagine that you are from another planet, and you were sent to Earth. Your mission is to discover what brings human beings happiness. However, the only sources for your research are popular magazines or commercials on TV. Take a few minutes to go through a magazine as a family or think about a commercial on TV that tells us what will make us happy. Make a list of these advertisements and what they tell us about what makes a human being happy. You may pause the video to discuss. We are bombarded every day with false messages that promise us happiness in life. These messages come not just from magazines or TV, but from many forms of social media, too. While these things may be nice to have, we know that deep down they don't bring true, lasting happiness. We know that true and lasting happiness comes from something much deeper. Unless we recognize this, however, we can fall prey to these false messages, and even internalize them, and try to live according to them. Sometimes we call these false messages stinking thinking. To help us better understand what stinking thinking is, you can watch the brief video. The link is at the top of this screen. Jesus' teachings help us get rid of stinking thinking. His teachings enable us to overcome false messages and seek the true happiness that comes from being in a relationship with Him. When Jesus began His preaching by calling people to repent, he was calling people to do much more than feel guilt or shame about a bad habit or two. Jesus was calling people to change their way of thinking. The Gospels use the Greek word metanoia for repent. Metanoia means turn around and face a new direction. Jesus' call to repentance is a call to lose our minds. 
He wants us to lose the mind that is carrying the false messages and to put on a new mind that is filled with the good news. If we desire things such as beauty, success, popularity, possessions, or wealth, things the world tells us will make us happy, we will ultimately be led away from true happiness. But when we live by God's values, which often means that we will go in the opposite direction that the world tells us to go, we will reach the kingdom of God because it is the place where God reigns. Jesus tells us that this place is in our midst. In fact, Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is a way of living rather than a geographical location. The best summary of Jesus' vision of the kingdom of God can be found in the Sermon on the Mount in chapters 5 through 7 of the Gospel of Matthew. In many ways, the Sermon on the Mount can be thought of as Jesus' keynote address in which he outlines God's plan for the world. Jesus begins the Sermon on the Mount with the Beatitudes, in which he tells us that we should be blessed or happy to be poor, to mourn, to be meek, to hunger for righteousness, to be merciful, to be pure of heart, to be a peacemaker, and even to be persecuted. These are not the kinds of things we are often told will make us feel happy or blessed. Throughout the rest of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus continues to turn the world upside down. He replaces what people had always been taught with his own teaching. For example, he changes the rules about retaliation. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. Can you think of some times where you have turned the other cheek? Jesus teaches that love for our neighbor goes beyond our fellow citizens or friends and includes even one's enemies. You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. One of the Catholic social teachings is concerned with life and dignity of the human person. All human life is sacred, and all people must be respected and valued over material goods. We are called to ask whether our actions as a society respect or threaten the life and dignity of the human person. Replacing our stinking thinking with Jesus' teachings can be easier said than done. Thankfully, most of us have had people in our lives who provide good examples of how to live according to the teachings of Jesus. Who is someone in your life who is poor in spirit, merciful, and a peacemaker? Who do you know that turns the other cheek and loves his or her enemies? You may pause the video to discuss. Thanks for sharing with one another. Jesus' teachings turn the world upside down, but many people have their doubts about him. They begin asking, who is this man? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Where is he getting his authority from? Jesus' followers and those whose lives he touched understood that his power and authority could only come from God. When we follow Jesus, we get rid of stinking thinking and see the world as Jesus wants us to see it. Jesus did things that only God could do. He cured illness. He turned water into wine. He fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. 
He walked on water and calmed the storm. And he raised people from the dead. These miracles show us that he is indeed filled with the divine spirit, since only God can completely overcome the lowest points in human life. Sickness, lack of sustenance, natural disasters, and of course, death. Jesus' miracles show us that God cares about us and comforts us during those low points. What impressed the disciples more than any of these miracles was that they saw Jesus forgive his enemies and love those who hated him and wanted to kill him. They recognized that Jesus was able to do this because he was filled with the Holy Spirit and was able to draw power from God the Father through his life of prayer. Jesus shows us that we too can draw from the power of God's Holy Spirit through prayer. A very effective way of praying is to pray with scripture. One way to do this is through Lexio Divina, which means sacred reading. In Lexio Divina, we practice three types of prayer, vocal prayer, meditative prayer, and contemplative prayer. In vocal prayer, we use words, silent or spoken aloud, to express our desires, share our praises, and ask for God's intercession. In meditative prayer, we use our thoughts, imagination, and emotions to engage in the mysteries of Christ. Contemplative prayer is the silent love shared between oneself and the Lord. To help us understand more about this ancient form of prayer, you can play the video by Becky Eldridge. The link is listed on the slide. You may hear God speaking to you if you practice this method. Let's review the steps of Lexio Divina. Read the passage slowly. What word or phrase captures your attention? Reflect. Slowly and carefully read the passage again. What is God saying to you? Respond. Read the passage again prayerfully and respond to God from your heart. Rest. Sit quietly in God's presence and ask God what he is saying to you. Of course, learning about prayer is not the same as praying. To help you get a better understanding of Lexio Divina, let's spend some time actually praying with this ancient form of prayer. Begin by relaxing and making yourself comfortable. Let's take a moment to do some deep breathing to slow down our minds and hearts. If you wish, you may close your eyes. Now, quietly ask God to guide this prayer time. Listen as I read the scripture passage and ask yourself what word or phrase captures your attention. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Heavenly Father. Listen as I reread the passage again and ask yourself, what is God saying to me in this passage? You are the salt of the earth. 
But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Listen one more time as I read the passage. Ask yourself, how will I respond to what I sense God is saying to me in this passage? You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Finally, rest quietly in God's presence and ask God to reveal the mind of Christ to you. Amen. What was that experience like for you? What was the word or phrase that captured your attention? You are free to explain your thoughts about the word or phrase, but you don't have to. You may pause this video to discuss with your family. Thanks for sharing. Another prayer that helps us keep Jesus in the center of our lives is a method of prayer that was taught by St. Ignatius of Loyola over 500 years ago called the Daily Examine. In the Daily Examine, you prayerfully reflect on the events of the day in order to detect God's presence and discern his activity in your life. The Examine is an ancient practice in the church that can help you see God's hand at work in your life. We begin by recalling that you are in God's presence. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead your prayer. Bring to mind one or two gifts that you receive today. Give thanks to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Review your day. When were you conscious of God's presence? When did you grow in faith, hope, and charity? When did you miss or reject those opportunities?
Speak with Jesus about anything that came up during your review of your day. Express sorrow for the times you failed to follow him. And give thanks for the grace that enabled you to follow his will. Look forward to tomorrow. Ask God for the grace to cooperate and trust in the loving guidance of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Finally, conclude the examine by silently praying the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, or the glory be. If you make a habit of practicing the daily examine, you will notice that at times you are growing closer to God. Over time, you will begin to notice patterns in your thoughts and behaviors that bring you closer to God, as well as those thoughts and behaviors that lead you away from Him. As you grow closer to God, you will discover the freedom to follow Him more closely. Through prayer, we are able to draw upon God's grace to live out Jesus' teachings. We put on the mind of Christ and make His teachings our own. Prayer helps us get rid of stinking thinking and develop a whole new way of seeing the world, ourselves, and others. We will begin to see everything through God's eyes, not our own. And when we see with the eyes of God, we recognize that He is present with us in our midst. Let's end our time by praying together the prayer that Christ himself taught us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your attention and participation. This is the last part of the series for the school year. Thanks again for listening and praying together. And may the Lord bless you and keep you.